be before you buy. Hey, and we're back with another... I already played the game, the uh, beta, and I really, really liked it. I will be playing the game when it comes out, especially because it is free on Game Pass. I don't know if I'm going to be finishing it because I feel like I'm going to rage quit real hard. Uh, I played the demo, yeah, the demo, which was like really short, but around two hours of gameplay. Uh, it was really fun. I It was hard, though. It was really hard. It made me rage, but I enjoyed it. So let's see what Gamer Ranks has to say about it. Is it like Demon Slayer? Demon, not Demon Slayer. Is it like Demon... De oh my god. Soulborn? Dark Souls? Thank you. Another episode of Before You Buy. Jesus that show Christ. where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing, as usual. I didn't play Jake. Elden Ring, no. And today we're talking about Lies I did play Peak. Dark Souls. This is all a Souls-like style game yep, from South is. Korean developer Round 8 Studios, and it's published by NeoWiz. This is straight up embracing this now classic subgenre. A lot of people have compared this to like a new Bloodborne. I think that's a little bit too derivative. This is its own thing, but... It's classic soul style gameplay. You grind so through challenging areas, you farm souls, you cash them in at a bonfire, you talk to cryptic, vague NPCs sometimes, and you get your ass kicked by really challenging bosses. Now we've seen a lot of other studios tackle this style, but first impressions here, even like 25 hours in, I think this is a pretty damn solid one that the sweaties are gonna like. Like it really seems like a love letter to FromSoft. Like they get it. Oh my it. God, the sweaties? it's a sweaties? nice palate cleanser after the massive open world Elden Ring to tackle a more traditionally structured game here. And hey, just so you know, the usual housekeeping here, uh, I've been playing a review copy on PlayStation 5. All this footage here is the PS5 version. As I say with every game in this genre as a warning, I am bad at them. I clearly suck, but I still like them and I try my best. So that's what counts, okay? That's so and mean, bro. That is so mean. So you mean. know, this footage is as spoiler-free as possible. I strongly I believe that half games. of the thrill suck. of these types of games is having that big boss jump out and surprise you for the first time. So I'm limiting my footage to mostly some of the earlier hours to preserve the surprise. Like the demo, uh, yeah. If you played the demo, just know I'm only showing a bit beyond there, but... I will say, if you have played the demo, mechanically, it's only a small taste. And I think that's important because the game has a lot Whoa. of cool stuff in it. It is well paced and introduces new mechanics further in than you'd expect. But the style, you know, this haunted Victorian puppet gothic type thing they have going on, it's, it's pretty awesome. I actually wanted a little bit more of it, but I'll get to that in a bit. The main gist of the setup at the start of the game is this. It's a retelling of the classic Pinocchio fairy tale. You're the puppet boy, and you awaken in the city of Krat, this beautiful, gilded, industrial city now crumbling because of puppet automaton machines gone rogue and all sorts of other nasty stuff. So you hack and slash your way through, occasionally oh! gathering with your few quiet allies to cash in souls and level up and tweak your build at the Firelink Shrine equivalent of Hotel Krat. It's like this beautiful haunted One hotel hit. building. It's pretty straightforward, but as it goes, it gets more complicated in the character build department, which I, th I think people will like. Now, combat is satisfying. You're dodging, you have strikes, you have heavy hits, they have a decent hit response feel to them, even if it's a tiny bit soft, and the sound effects are good. And you know, you're wearing enemies down for fatal blows, what you're doing the backstab thing, and the animations really sell a lot of it. Switching to a heavy weapon and doing some big, heavy wind-up smash attack is always really satisfying to nail. And the game introduces a lot of exciting weapon types to change things up. I expected to run around the whole game with like a fancy boy rapier the whole time, but I was consistently tempted with other builds. Uh, anyway, back to just the combat stuff you're doing, you're blocking and you're timing the block button perfectly to mitigate any damage. Timings are pretty brutal and reading some enemy attacks feels incredibly tough because this one- I honestly like, I did play all uh, three Dark Souls games and I know about timing and I know how like how important dodging and timing and figuring out the attacks of the enemies because they are different and also working around the weapon that you have, the weapon of choice. I usually had like a staff or a longer weapon so I would poke them a lot of times and try to uh, play around it being a bit farther away from them. But in this game, all the weapons that I had were short weapons and none of them were long and the timing was so crucial. It was even more crucial than any Dark Souls game I played. So if you mess up the timing, it's very hard. 
can be extremely unforgiving. I mean, look at me on screen here, getting my ass kicked. It's not always quite as precise as a soul stickler might want, but it does feel really darn close. It does have a sort of Bloodborne type thing where if you accrue some damage through blocking, you have a small window of jumping into attack mode to gain some lost health back. And I always have loved that type of mechanic. It's encouraging strategic aggression. It's cool. Liza P gets it really right with all the other stuff added on. Like to name nice. just a few. That's a nice. Uh, a special attack meter. Come on, with come on, two hit it. different abilities you can use on the it's fly to depending on your weapon build. These are called fable arts. Uh, you know, they, they can be like a big magic charged hit, a rapid strike thing, cool stuff like that. And then maybe an overpowered block or a temporary buff to your weapon. The brilliant thing is as you pick up weapons, you can reassemble them into combinations that have your preferred specs, of course, but more importantly, those abilities I mentioned. Every weapon is both a top part, like a like a blade or whatever, and the bottom, like a handle or a hilt. So you can- If there is one thing I hate about these enemies is when they have one health. Like they still have that one health. Ah. Oh mix and match combinations like putting an axe head on the handle of a dagger the weapon will handle differently and if you have your stats right it's going to make sense uh, but then uh, with that you access the dagger handles special attacks that's pretty cool it's a simple but good process and the depth is in upgrading both the top part and the handle separately with their own unique sub upgrading systems yeah so that's cool you're doing that you're dumping souls or ergo into stuff like health stamina, attack, a few other things. And on top of that, you have a cool mechanical arm that gives you access to even more abilities to use on the fly. Ah! If you've only played the demo- Let's be honest, how much are we gonna use that arm? Besides shielding, like I understand the shield aspects, but attacking with that arm, mm, like it's, you have to be so close to the enemy to hit that. It requires stamina, it requires, mm, and the damage is not that great. You haven't really seen anything. The Legion arm stuff is absolutely awesome. And once it opens... Ah, okay. Because I did play the demo and in the demo we saw nothing with the hand. So that's why I base my opinion on like... Up, you're able to earn and craft a bunch of different arms that have wildly different use cases. Uh, aside from the starting punching arm and the grappling hook arm, uh, you can end up shooting a big bomb, a stun blast, a Ooh, limited use okay, little that's arm cool. shield, and a really cool one where you can plant mines in the ground that detonate when an enemy walks up. Now, all of these have their own unique upgrade trees all where right. you can level them up and get access I to want those grenades, brother. change ups to each thing. So like uh, smaller things like having a shorter charge shot time to bigger stuff like being able to move while you use certain abilities. Wait. The ability to grapple towards enemies. See? The damage is still so weak. They got exploded twice and they're still walking. Just got stunned a bit. Please not just pull them towards you. There's a lot. And along with that, you're collecting rare items to spend on your character's Oh mechanical my god, heart, let's burn them all. Which acts as kind of like a Good traditional night, skill tree with a bit of extra depth behind each selection. You dump points well. into having more health charges or special meter or an extra dodge. And then when you dump a point into them, you can choose bonus attributes as well. Get better. So there isn't like RPG armor rating type stuff, just skins very cool ones, but oh, I like there the is a subsystem of uh, equipable items to buff and protect you, and you have to manage weight within it. And then on top of that, there's the wish stone system, and then there's the throwables, the sharpening your blade with special elemental buffs. There's a lot I to like this, this weapon, one. man. And not enough time to really explain it all in this video, but I really enjoyed the game more because of all this stuff. You're going to see gameplay of people playing a lot differently. Not just like a heavy or Oh, I hate weapon, that. I hate that. All the cool arm abilities and the fable arts and experimenting with that. There's some creativity and some good room for screwing around here. And it's always fun and it's always enticing. And speaking of enticing, it's it's the setting, it's the art design, the direction, the level design, all of that here. Prot is beautiful. You end up going to some surrounding areas that have varying degrees of yeah, coolness. Yeah, so beautiful. There's a couple of areas in the game that kind of dragged on a little bit. One thing that really attracted me into this game, besides the idea of Lies of P, Pinocchio, um, it's the fact that the style the universe that they are in it looks like victorian but steampunky the theme is so beautiful it's everything i love and more like i wish people dressed like this nowadays i wish i lived in a world where people dress like this 
and every person looks different with their own unique style as well but for me they felt a little boring and not as cool as like some of those big moments that but guy's hanging like said, in the there fairly well paced and if you're playing at an okay clip you're going to move past some of the more boring environments with sometimes occasionally a few boring enemy types but i'd say 75 percent of the enemy types kick ass and the bosses absolutely deliver my only thing really is that i wish they dived even deeper into this style i wish there was more detailed city environments because where like a lot of the yeah. stuff you see on screen here does look stunning you can turn a corner and you can find a room and there are some barren empty rooms that just Aww. feel like blank video game rooms it's a small complaint it's only here and there sometimes it bummed me out a little bit otherwise though Aww. visually the game looks great i had no performance issues on playstation 5 at all a couple of little bits of texture pop in in the earlier levels but that was really it like i said the bosses are cool the cutscenes are cool the chaos is yeah. cool there's actually some i don't think they paid so much attention to the actual environment and the environmental design because at the end of the day it's a dark soul type of game and they put more emphasis on the character creation and the character design as well as maybe the story in some places uh, so I feel like that it was more important. Like if you are playing a game like Tomb Raider or Uncharted, then you pay more attention because you spend much more time in specific areas um, than when it comes to this game. Plus in this game, like they do realize that you have to die multiple times and repeat the same area over and over again, which also brings me to question then why did you not knowing in some areas that people are going to be repeating it, paying attention to these areas where you know that people are going to be dying and repeating close to a boss um, than other areas. But like looking at this, it's so good. It looks so good. Maybe there was a reason. Maybe they wanted it to look more barren, you know, to fit that idea and the story. Some interesting stuff to the story here. They are really trying something. How it lands, I think it's going to depend on the person and some of the voice acting and the writing specifically is kind of weird and disjointed, but it was, you know, unique. So you got to give them points for that. So I do think ultimately, if you were looking for like a new Bloodborne, since From Software seemingly isn't going to make another one anytime soon, or even update the PS4 version, uh, this can kind of scratch that itch. It still is different. I don't think I would like to compare it to Bloodborne. It is very much its own special thing. And in conjunction with that, Liza P is also its very own Overhead. specific, distinct, How special thing. How did that thing. even hit, uh, man? With the amount of stuff you can lump onto your character, like I said, with weapon. the fable arts, the wishes, uh, the character oh, build with the heart. And some secrets shit. I've still honestly yet to uncover with a whole kind of lies system and a little bits of choice you can make with NPCs. Liza P does feel very much like its own thing. It is clearly, definitely going for a Soulsborne style game. They clearly love From Software, but everything else beyond that is just so unique. And I think people are really gonna dig this one. It is, of course, incredibly challenging, like I've said, but I've seen some people, and I relate to those people who wanna try this game. You know, the style, the atmosphere, all that stuff really appeals to them, but they're just not a Souls-like person. I get that. I will say this one yeah, does a pretty good job of easing you in. I found it pretty easy to pick up and play. Obviously, you're going to hit walls, but there's a lot to experiment with. There's a lot to go explore and do stuff to kind of really get you acclimated to this harsh type of gameplay style. Mm. So I would say if you like the art direction or you've been Aww. waiting for a game like this, this but place. you didn't want like the most ultra hard game in the world, I would still say consider giving this one a shot. It might be worth pushing through because if you can overcome some of the challenges, you're going to see some really cool stuff, dude. If you're determined to pass, you must prove your identity. Who are you? It's Garb's you wife. A stalker. It's Luffy's grandma. I like this idea of having the timer. <coughs> Interesting. I thought all the stalkers died when the workshop tower collapsed. But that's a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion. And now I want to hear yours down in the comments. I Did you expect mine. yet another good video game to release this year? Are you already busy with a bunch of oh, other games? Oh yeah, I'm well, busy. I'm so busy. Mortal Kombat Let me know what one. you're playing right now. And if you had any intentions of picking up Lies of P, especially after reviews have dropped, did you play the uh, demo? What'd you think of that? Let's talk anything Lies of ah, P. Let's talk anything Pinocchio. Never when he turns red. Comments. Just dodge. I'd love to hear from you guys. Hopefully seeing some gameplay and hearing some insight and some first impressions steered you one way or the other. If it did, clicking the like button does help us out. That's all you got to do. Thank you. We do appreciate it. But oh, that's it. I'm Jake Baldino. See you guys next time. Bro, dodging that was not the best idea. Not dodging. I mean, blocking. 
because in this game when you actually block you get you get damaged it's not like you just block it and you lose stamina no 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 or you end up like you have to sharpen your weapon or anything like that no you get damaged so you better dodge everything in this game let's be honest unless you really can't and you have to block not if you time it correctly timing it correctly is so hard in this game beyond hard i was frustrated man i thought i timed it correctly many times and it turns out no not really nope <laughs> I loved it. I, 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 I actually, I hated it. That's why I loved it. <laughs> like, this is the type of thing, that's the relation you have with Dark Souls type of games. I was streaming and I was swearing so much and you guys enjoyed it. You enjoyed seeing me suffer and beg to stop and say, I will never play this game again. I will delete the shit out of it. Don't ask me to play it again. And you were like, oh yes, bunny, we will. Oh yes, you're gonna play it. <laughs> so that is the thing, you know, like, I hate it. But you kind of forget the suffering. You know, you forget the pain. Thank God there is no memory of pain. You know that you had pain, but you don't remember the pain. That's why people have a second and a third child, women. You know, they give birth twice, three times five times in their life but like yeah mm. let's go back into it i'm ready 